topics, uh, which is, uh, of course, uh, positive technology. So uh, throughout this workshop presentation, uh, my primary goal is to provide uh, some uh, um, general context, a, a general overview of the fundamental goals of positive technology and uh, to share some practical design principles derived uh, from our latest uh, research endeavors. Uh, so in the first part of the workshop, I will uh, uh, provide some uh, background on the concept of positive technology. For sure, Professor Riva has already um, provided you some contextual information, but uh, I think that in this case, uh, repetita juvent, uh, in the sense that uh, positive technology is quite a broad field, and uh, you, you can uh, see this uh, from different perspectives and fix uh, uh, the field from different uh, angles. So um, uh, the angle I would like to take in this workshop is to introduce some uh, uh, core principles of design, which I think are useful uh, um, when uh, uh, it comes to apply positive technology in the development uh, of actual and concrete application. So um, I, I won't delve deeply into these ideas during this session uh, because I will have the opportunity to explore the concept of positive technology more extensively in my following keynote speech. Uh, so, um, after a, a brief introduction, I will hand over the floor to my colleague, uh, Dr. Flavia Cristofolini, who will take the opportunity to demonstrate um, a tangible example of positive technology design. Her presentation will uh, shed light uh, on the practical application of the principles uh, of positive technology design, and hopefully, offer some insights into our ongoing work. Um, so before starting, uh, uh, please allow me to introduce Dr. Flavia Cristofolini. Flavia is a senior research consultant at the Research Center uh, in Communication Psychology. And she is also adjunct professor at the Faculty of Psychology at the Catholic University of Milan. Uh, she holds a degree in foreign language and literature and a degree in clinical psychology. She specialized uh, in third generation cognitive behavioral psychotherapy. And uh, um, her goal uh, in our lab uh, is to apply positive psychology and third way cognitive behavioral approach uh, to teaching, uh, uh, learning, and school well being. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering if Flavia is connected, uh, if she can hear us. Uh, uh, Flavia would like to test the mic, please. Yes, I'm here, Andrea. Okay, excellent, excellent. Uh, did, did I for, forgot something? No, uh, in, in thank you. It's okay, it's okay, okay. So, um, before starting uh, 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 the workshop, uh, uh, also allow me to introduce the Research Center in uh, uh, communication psychology, uh, which I have the privilege uh, and honor of leading. It was established in uh, 1996 by Professor Luigi Anolli, who was, uh, served uh, as uh, first director. And uh, the goal of the Research Center is to understand communication uh, and the psychology of, of mediated experience uh, from a psychosocial perspective. Uh, uh, the center features uh, a quite large uh, team of researchers. We have three full professors, two associate professors, uh, three researchers, uh, several postdocs, uh, and uh, PhDs. Uh, we have a very practical orientation integrating cognitive and social psychology, uh, cyber psychology, user experience psychology. We develop uh, intervention to enhance communication process uh, and deepen our understanding of, of positive uh, uh, technology applications. So we can now start uh, uh, with the workshop, uh, but I think that this preliminary information is very useful uh, to establish some connections uh, um, between uh, our university and uh, our research center and uh, uh, the, the, the audience today. 
and researchers from your university. Um, so what about positive technology? We know that significant research has focused on understanding uh, uh, what are the risks associated with digital technologies. Uh, we talk about uh, the risk uh, all the time when uh, speaking about emerging technologies, uh, but uh, the exploration of uh, using technology to improve well-being uh, has received, in comparison, less attention. However, we think that this investigation uh, is uh, very important uh, as computers uh, uh, continue to became uh, uh, pervasive presence uh, in our daily lives. We are not just using technology, we are now immersed in digital ecosystems and the boundaries uh, between uh, physical and digital space are becoming uh, increasingly blurred. Uh, digital technologies uh, are uh, really becoming uh, integrated with the very fabric of reality. Uh, they're bringing forth a new era where our uh, physical surrounding seamlessly integrate with virtual uh, elements, uh, creating a, a dynamic and interconnected ecological uh, uh, digital system. Within this hybrid, uh, digital environments, uh, objects, tools, and even our own bodies can now be transformed into programmable interfaces that enable entirely new ways of experiencing uh, physical and social space. So I think that metaphor of reality as an app encapsulates a uh, defining characteristic of these digital spaces. It illustrates how the integration of computers into everyday objects coupled with a growing bi-directional flow of information between the digital and the physical realms is actively reshaping our surrounding environment. This transformative process is revolutioning our perception interaction with the world around us. And of course, uh, uh, robots and artificial intelligence may soon become uh, 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 a very integral part of our everyday life, making individuals increasingly dependent on them. And as you know, uh, you're from Hong Kong, so you know very well, the consumer robotics industry is growing very rapidly and uh, is projected to thrive in the future. So. There is a strong emphasis on personal assistance robotics, uh, uh, especially in Western countries, uh, with significant investments uh, dedicated to meeting the needs uh, of aging and mobility impaired population. So uh, what about artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence uh, is now uh, at the center of the global discussion. Uh, think about ChatGPT, uh, this advanced ling language model uh, developed by OpenAI um, has currently over 100 million users globally, and uh, uh, it was launched uh, in November 2022, and it took just five days uh, for this application to achieve 1 million users. So um, it's clear that uh, the widespread of technology poses significant risk and issues and challenges. But uh, on the other hand, uh, it's quite surprising that uh, most psychological studies uh, nowadays examining the effects of technology on well being have primarily concentrated on the potential negative consequences uh, of technology. For example, cyber addiction techno stress, uh, privacy concerns, and so on. In contrast, in my opinion, less emphasis has been placed on exploring how digital tools can be used to enhance well-being and uh, um, foster, promote positive change. And this is the very 
motivation for, for positive technology. This is the primary driving force behind the development uh, of this area. Uh, that is the desire to explore how information and communication technology can uh, be leveraged to enhance positive experience and personal growth. And uh, um, as you know, this research area emerged from the convergence of two significant trends. First trend, uh, there was a growing interest uh, at the beginning uh, of the new century uh, in scientifically understanding well-being uh, and the factors that contribute to individuals flourishing, uh, which was reflected in the rapid expansion of positive psychology as a discipline. And secondly, within the field of human-computer interaction, personally, I am a, a human-computer interaction researcher, there was increasing recognition of the role that uh, human experience, values, and ethical consideration play in the design, development, and use of interacting systems. So by integrating these two perspectives, positive technology aims at opening new possibilities and uh, um, inquiries regarding how digital technologies can contribute to shaping positive aspects of human functioning, strengths, and empowerment. Um, so the growing interest in uh, scientifically studying uh, uh, well-being, uh, as you know, paved the way in early 2000 uh, for the emergence of positive psychology as a distinct uh, research field. And since its inception, positive psychology experienced a rapid de development leading to the establishment uh, of uh, uh, several academic courses, uh, international conferences and publications uh, uh, in journals and books. So defining the price, uh, sorry, um, defining uh, the precise goals uh, of positive psychology as a scientific discipline uh, is challenging uh, because it, it has very comprehensive uh, nature and explores uh, various uh, aspects related to the essence of a fulfilling life. Uh, so I tend to rely on the PERMA model uh, uh, developed by one of the founders of positive psychology, Martin Seligman. Uh, the PERMA model uh, uh, has outlined five core elements of psychological well-being uh, and, and happiness. Uh, the first element uh, is positive emotion. Uh, positive emotions uh, serve as a prominent, prominent uh, that way to happiness, according, according to positive psychology scholars, um, the, the significance, of course, uh, extends beyond uh, simply smiling and, uh, you know, uh, wearing uh, positive lenses uh, uh, for seeing lives, um, because it involves the ability to maintain uh, an optimistic outlook, uh, um, to, to look at the future with a constructive perspective, so understanding how positive emotions contribute to happiness uh, um, has been uh, uh, very much pushed forward by Barbara Fredericks on the Broad and Bill theory. And uh, uh, this model has paved the way uh, for the understanding of the very function, evolutive function also, that positive emotions uh, have in our life. Uh, they extend uh, our range uh, of thoughts uh, and uh, um, uh, uh, and action repertories and they build uh, uh, long-lasting positive resources. Engagement. Engagement refers to the act of pursuing our passions and experiencing enthusiasm in our endeavors. Um, each person finds uh, uh, engagement uh, in different activities uh, uh, whether uh, it can be playing a musical instrument, uh, participating uh, in sports, uh, dancing, uh, uh, working on uh, uh, on a research project, for example, or, or uh, other uh, you know leisure activities. So Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi introduced the concept of flow to describe this optimal experience of engagement. Flow is a mental state characterized by a complete immersion in an activity which is accompanied by deep concentration, uh, enjoyment, uh, and uh, intrinsic motivation. Um, flow basically means that uh, the activity itself is self-rewarding 
and provides a, a sense of fulfillment. Meaning and purpose. Having a sense of purpose in life uh, is uh, a deeply ingrained human need. Viktor Frankl, uh, a Viennese uh, psychiatrist uh, who endured the horrors of Nazi concentration camps, emphasized the significance of finding personal and collective meaning uh, as the ultimate goal of human existence. Uh, so discovering one's purpose in life is not a straightforward task, uh, and uh, positive psychology can uh, help uh, in this endeavor by uh, providing structured approaches uh, to uncover meanings uh, 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 and uh, create structured and specific interventions uh, uh, to provide guidance and support in the pursuit of finding purpose and meaning in life. And finally, uh, self-transcendence. Self-transcendence plays a crucial role in the pursuit of a meaning and is a vital component of overall well-being. At its core, self-transcendence involves uh, surpassing the limitations of the self and connecting uh, with something greater than ourself. Um, in in uh, simpler terms, uh, uh, self-transcendence is the realization that you are a small part of a larger whole and behaving accordingly. Such greater entity can take various forms for example, humanity as a whole, nature, the universe, uh, or divine power. There is substantial evidence uh, that uh, self transcendence uh, significantly contributes to well being. Uh, the positive outcomes uh, of this construct uh, encompass pro social behavior, self control, and increased life satisfaction. So, we will talk uh, uh, about self-transcendence uh, more in depth uh, when, uh, um, uh, during my, my keynote speech, uh, we're talking about uh, the emotion of awe. Uh. But uh, um, let's now focus on the very core of this workshop. Uh, so how can we translate uh, the conceptual principles of positive psychology into, design guidelines for developing positive technologies. Uh, given the practical goal of this workshop, uh, um, um, my colleague uh, Flavia uh, Cristofolini will now illustrate a concrete example of the design of a positive technology that incorporates uh, the core ideas that I have discussed uh, in this uh, introduction. And more specifically, uh, Flavia will talk about an application for uh, youth mental well-being that we have been developing over the last two years, together with an international team in a project funded by the European Commission under the uh, Erasmus Plus uh, program. Um, so now I am pleased to give the floor to Flavia Cristofolini. Um, Flavia, can you please share your screen? Here I am. Thank you, Andrea, and thank you, um, everybody, for uh, listening to me. And hopefully, um, I will be uh, giving you some interesting um, insights about uh, this project. So as uh, uh, Professor Gajoli said, I'm uh, in charge of the more applicative um, role of uh, our commu uh, psychology communication center at Catholic University in Milan. And uh, I'm glad to present you this new app we have been developing. Let's start from the very title I decided to give. It's a metaphorical voyage. So first of all, I'd like to emphasize that as a positive uh, technology experts, we chose to emphasize as communication 
uh, for the in, in order to be more effective in our communication with, with youth, we chose to emphasize a, a symbolical language uh, because we believe that this is more also on the basis of literature and, uh, and uh, youth's feed, feedback. We believe that this is more effective than uh, theoretical information for mental health literacy, which is actually more frequent, mostly frequent in all the mental health apps we have been analyzing. So there's a metaphor, there's a symbol, and the symbol, the metaphor, actually it's an allegory to be more precise, uh, because it's a story, it's a metaphorical story, the story of, of a voyage at sea. And uh, the psychological components and aims um, are uh, from emotional awareness to emotional regulation. So we chose to um, privilege uh, the issue of a difficult self, uh, self-regulation, emotional self-regulation, uh, because we know that after COVID-19, there has been a decrease in this competence, which as everybody knows, and also personally as a psychotherapist, unfortunately every day, I'm in contact with dysregulated youth who as a consequence have a significant issues in behavioral um, uh, problems like um, eating disorders, suicidal ideation or, or behaviors, and also um, problematic uh, uh, emotions like depression and, uh, and uh, anxiety. So this is the very short introduction on our app. As Professor Gajoli said, it's an international team and we as Catholic University are especially in charge of the scientific and evidence-based component of the app together with the development, uh, which has been technically, is being technically developed by uh, uh, Become Hub in Milan by Luca Bernardelli, who is another important figure today in Italy and not only in Italy for uh, positive technology development. And uh, uh, okay, the project aims are to improve positive mental health of youth 16 to 25 through a mobile app and with a special regard to people, young people who do not have access to a protective psychological network like parents or adults, significant adults, for example, people who are in rural areas, isolated, um, not employed or engaged in training, people with fewer opportunities, but not only isolated, outside urban environment, because we know that also in the city, a young person can feel extremely isolated and without psych psychological support. So we have two main aims to reduce risk, risk factors for mental disorders, but also to enhance protective factors. So this is a, a complete positive perspective of positive mental health. We know that positive mental health finds several definitions on the basis of, it's also very much cultural based, but um, from our analysis of the needs and of the field, we have chosen, as I was saying, to focus on some um, crucial components of positive mental health. And the second uh, um, important innovative uh, uh, aspect of this app is that it intends to involve uh, youth workers, but also other significant adults in the use of this app as a tool. So there will be a uh, digital and uh, in presence dedicated training for youth workers and teachers, educators, and psychologists. So the, the, we are also uh, writing, creating a specific training uh, that is based on the same psychological framework and innovative psychological components uh, the, uh, of the app. So that the training is completely coherent with the app and also allow, allows the uh, youth workers and the adults, the educators, to expand the applications of these activities in new ways and more creative um, different tasks, but based on the same evidence-based uh, component. Um, so the problem is a youth 
mental health issues, as I was said, saying emotion regulation has worsened, but also languishing has, has, has increased. So we are not only interested in young people with clinical or better subclinical issues, but also in people with languishing. Languishing is an issue that has been recently recognized and defined after the pandemic. And this is a state of emptiness, stagnation, lack of motivation. This is why in the mood tracking and emotional intelligence um, um, a sector of the app, we have decided to in include not only the basic emotions like anger, sadness, and, uh, and uh, the others, but also emptiness and boredom, which is not boredom, but it's a lack of uh, direction, is a lack of, of meanings. So this is a more eudaimonic crisis um, within the realm of positive psychology. And um, uh, so I'd like to, before going on with the theoretical part and the analysis of the uh, process, design process that we have adopted, and also the psychological theories, I'd like to give you a very short overview of the app uh, itself with this very short video. So there's a, an onboarding message, as you can see. Please notice that the um, uh, characters, the fonts, are chosen so that a person with dyslexia can easily read because uh, we have uh, taken, um, we have considered adopted the accessibility protocol of Microsoft. And uh, you will see that in this onboarding uh, message, the young person is welcome on the board and uh, he is described as uh, the captain. So he is the captain of uh, his only sailing ship. So the emphasis with very simple language, intuitive messages is on self-determination, empowerment, and uh, the responsibility of uh, taking care taking charge of uh, his or her own mental health, uh, which is a very strong message we want to give throughout the app. You determine how best direct your ship and which direction you want to take. So again, the emphasis on direction, on choosing which meaning to give to his or her life. And uh, the uh, onboarding message presents uh, the options that the person can, can have. Either he can choose to find emotional support, uh, clicking on the boy on the life vest, or he can go to the um, uh, uh, mood tracking activity, or he or she can open the maps and choose the direction. And uh, the directions can be the island of strengths, the land of wisdom, and the safe harbor. We will see the three different functions of these destinations. So you can see this is the uh, arrival deck. So there are two companions, two Voyager companions, one turtle and one bird. The turtle is the wiser companion. She or he, we, we, we don't want to, to be too gender identified because this was one of the requests um, of the youth in the focus groups to have more neutral, gender neutral characters. Um, and the turtle will give the more the wiser, even the more scientific information um, and instructions in the activities, while the bird is a more enthusiastic and more encouraging companion. So they have two different characteristics. Please notice that the visuals have been chosen by the youth themselves in the focus groups dedicated to the visual choice. They chose a calm, relaxed uh, visual in order to differentiate the app for the more sophisticated entertainment, gamified apps that they know very well, but uh, uh, this app has a different uh, aim. So it doesn't want to entertain or hyper-stimulate. On the contrary, it wants to offer um, um, uh, a relaxing environment where to learn and to grow. Uh, so this is why the environment and the and the and the colors always also has these features, and the icons. Very briefly, we, you have a microscope which indicates if you click there, you open the scientific basis for each activity. Uh, 
on the right top right you have the logbook where the young person can answer self-reflective questions about his journey his voyage and his activities and also do some activities some tasks like the self-compassionate letter or the three mm, good things of the gratitude exercise here on the top um, bottom right you have the logbook the sorry the map to choose the direction and here on the um, left bottom left you have the icon with the weather conditions and if you click there you open the mood tracking at the center you have the wheel which gives you the direction and you will be able to choose the values that give direction to your to your life journey and um, we do not have time, of course, to see everything, but very um, shortly, I will show you some activities of the mood tracking, for example. So uh, the mood tracking, you will have the main um, uh, uh, emotions, happiness, fear, sadness, anger, indifference for each emotion, you, the user can choose three micro emotions. On the left, you have like, like an emotion thermometer where the young person uh, will be led to learn to identify the intensity of the emotion. So all this belongs to emotional intelligence um, section of the app. And uh, there's also mental uh, health literacy as a as a as a as an aim because uh, uh, the young person is given new voc vocabulary to describe the different emotional nuances and um and so this goes on for all the um emotions micro emotions macro emotions you can't see it very well but uh, at the back of this pop-up window you will see that the weather conditions change according to the emotion and so, for example, the person chooses sadness, the conditions will become, uh, the weather will become rainy, or you will have a storm. So this is, for example, sadness. And there will be messages, pop-up messages from the, from the bottle. So this is the maps. And these are the different destinations. So this is the safe harbor. Here, the user can learn uh, slow breathing activities uh, to uh, decrease uh, the emotional, uh, physical, and neurophysiological arousal of uh, anxiety or, or um, emotional activation. And the voice will accompany, uh, the voice of the turtle and the bird will accompany the exercise in synchronicity, in, in synchronous with the rolling up and down of the waves on the beach. And there's a voice that teaches to breathe deeply and to decrease the emotions, first of all. A second destination is the uh, land of wisdom. Uh, here you can see the changes of the deck according to the rewards. And um, whenever the user completes a task, there will be changes uh, in, in the landscape, in the ship uh, as rewards. The safe harbor is a different destination uh, where the user can learn to identify avoiding as a, as a trap. So um, the difficulty in accepting emotions and the metaphor is the one of the leaves on the streams, um, which is a famous metaphor used, adopted by acceptance and commitment therapy. And, uh, and other activities. And here, this is the island of positive psychology, the island of strengths. Here, the user can choose one of the gems to do some activities. For example, here, we're going to show the empathy training and the gem becomes a heart and the young person can choose which activity he has been doing that week to be more empathetic more compassionate towards people and the, then the um, the app will give him or her the list of uh, the activities compassion activities that he has been doing and you you have seen that um the heart the more act empathetic activities he has been doing the more alive the heart has become there's a there's other activities this for example is one activity for uh, the training of awe, so training of a, a deep wonder 
of the environment, also urban environment, through noticing emotions and, and sensations in your body while you're doing this mindful walk. So there are key words that will pass in, in the landscape to help you identify the key moments of this mindful walk. And the turtle will accompany with a voice and you can um, put your, your headphone on and walk in nature on your urban environment and do this mindful uh, activity. Um, another activity that uh, I will be showing you presently is uh, the training of another strength, and that is optimism. We have chosen to adopt the ABC, famous ABC uh, strategy, uh, which we have chosen to metaphorize with clouds. Each cloud contains a cognitive bias, and uh, the a uh, turtle will help you recognize the mental trap, the mind trap, and the bird will help you discuss and dispute this cognitive bias and help you reframing uh, the bias in a positive way. So this is just the three examples of the training that the user can do in the island of um, character strengths. So other strengths that are trained with the metaphorized activities are creativity, uh, courage, compassion for the others, self-compassion, and more. So I'm going to stop the presentation and go to um, the next slide, where I'm just going to present the key assets of this app. So the user interface, um, we wanted it to be very intuitive, as intuitive as possible, with the appealing design, but at the same time, navigational patterns that are quite familiar. The animation, the micro interactions want to be, as they asked, uh, want to be easy and intuitive um, to enhance engagement. We chose a bright and calm color scheme and a clear purpose. Um, the content and the resources are as diverse as possible because we want the user to have a choice of different activities like text, listening, uh, more interactive, less interactive activities so as to allow diversity of this experience. Uh, the customization is easy, notifications are not too pushy, and they can be personalized. Reminders that are in the message in the bottle are intended to encourage the user to go on with the growth, uh, the, the path of growth and um, self-awareness. Uh, the accessibility, inclusivity are have been considered as regards the font, but also as regards an interaction that can be personalized. And the progress tracking is allowed through the logbook. Here, uh, we are going to consider soon, in a while, the psychological components. They are all validated approach, approaches within the uh, third wave, the cognitive behavioral world, positive psychology of the, of the second wave, especially, that is the positive psychology that um, considers a more dialectical vision of emotions. So negative emotions, so-called, are not um, stigmatized, but they are included and accepted as important and significant. And that each activity is evidence-based. So there's a youth work support, as I explained before, and there will be an accompanied site that will give all information of, about the app research uh, for the uh, institutions and the, the educators, as well as extra resources for mental health literacy and uh, first help contacts. The uh, design that we have chosen is the one best indicated for the positive technology framework that is the human center. Human at center, as Professor Gajoli said, which is also the vision of our university, Catholic university, that emphasizes strongly the human, human component. And uh, this um, design um, involves there's a continued continuous project team interaction between us psychologists, us researchers, the of course scientific supervision of Professor Gajoli and the developers and the users 
so this is why we have been um, realizing so far three focus groups with more than 80 young people, transnational groups, to have their continuous feedback on this perpetual uh, prog progressive uh, prototype that we have been realizing. Um, uh, so this is the uh, user experience design. Professor Gajoli is uh, um, directing, has created and, and is directing a master in user experience in, uh, in our university in Milan and uh, where they apply this uh, design. So we started from a desk and field research with benchmarking analysis a systematic review of uh, the uh, mental health youth apps existing, youth needs analysis from literature and also these focus groups, and uh, the identification of the personas and the users' journeys. Um, as a second step, we identified, as I was saying, the um, app purpose and the psychological framework with a careful choice of evidence-based psychological framework. And then we concentrated on the concept and the metaphorical architecture. And then we considered design functionalities and the testing and iteration. And for example, now we are organizing next week the usability, usability tests. And in September, we'll have the first effectiveness, psychological effectiveness test. And then, of course, we will have activities and the events of research, dissemination, and promotion. Uh, as regards the ben benchmark in analysis, um, we're going to uh, there's the, there's a there's a study uh, which is in press for Springer uh, that has been realized by um, the researcher uh, Milika Petrovic together with Professor Gajoli and I about the uh, about the uh, existing mental health uh, apps. Uh, using the APA evaluation model, so American Psychiatric Association, um, considering privacy, clinical foundation, engagement of the mental health apps. And uh, the results was that most existing apps for, for youth emphasize target the psychological clinical issues like um, sleep disorders, schizophrenia, like depression, but very few apps so far consider a positive perspective of a positive mental health. So very few uh, apps aim at enhancing well-being by promoted, promoting the positive empowerment and the character strengths, positive emotions, meaning, and all the PERMA component that Professor Gajoli has presented. And uh, no apps consider the involvement of adults in the use of the apps, of the app. So this in some ways uh, confirm the choice that we have done. And then we also carried out carried out a systematic review of apps with a, um, a, a deep study considered all um, again using this app uh, um, APA evaluation modern screener and the focus groups as I was saying this is just one example of one question that we ask uh, the, the young people how could an ideal app be useful to you for your well-being and they answered new strategies for managing anxiety and difficult emotions. So there was a request, not only to increase positive emotion, but also to how to deal with difficult emotions. This is why we integrated in an innovative framework Together with positive psychology, second wave positive psychology, we integrated acceptance and acceptance and commitment therapy, which we believe uh, offer the best tools, the most effective and validated tools, strategies to deal with difficult emotions. Uh, they asked for mood tracking, they asked for personalization of the user experience, they asked for no personal data. They were worried about privacy and security. Um, they asked for some gamification features, but not too many. And uh, so we accepted and went 
took their information, their feedback. So this is one example of the four per personas that we have identified and the user journey. So for example, this is one uh, persona. She is a university student. Um, she's interested in, uh, in the uh, exploring her emotional skills. She is already familiar with some apps of well-being. So she is, so to say, is a more sophisticated user. So this is why we also have inserted in the app a scientific option. So an option where the user if he or she wants to, he can explore the scientific basis for the activity. And um, uh, as regards the app psychological framework, as I was saying, these are the four components in an innovative integration, uh, emotional intelligence as intelligence as a start, because uh, a young person, because what we notice in literature and also in psychotherapy, we notice that young people do not have awareness of what they are feeling and what this emotion feels like and how to recognize and which words to give to describe even the vocabulary is poor. And so if the vocabulary is poor, they can't even verbalize mentally so they can think about the emotion. So if they can think about the emotion, they can manage their emotions. So this is why we put emotional intelligence as first step. And then emotional regulation, especially with two um, strategies, uh, acceptance and diffusion. Acceptance means to make space for the emotion, not to avoid it, not to fight it. And diffusion means to keep a distance to watch, to look at the emotion in perspective through some metaphorical activities in the app and mindfulness. The positive empowerment, especially the positive reappraisal in the ABC that you have seen with the clouds, optimism, hope, self-efficacy, and character strengths. And finally, we have inserted uh, uh, the compassion-focused therapy uh, of Gilbert and Christine Neff especially the self-compassion. Why? Because we have noticed that these young people, especially girls, sorry to say that, um, have a huge issue of self-criticism, which uh, hinders, does not allow a positive, a full expression of the best potential of the best self. Um, this is one example of acceptance, which has been metaphorized in one activity in the island of wisdom. So there will be weather forecast, weather, weather conditions changing, and the voice will remind the user that he or she is the sky. So he does not have to, he mustn't identify with the single weather conditions. So you are not the stormy, we are, we are, you are not a stormy sky, you are not um, a foggy weather, but you are the sky. So you can accept that difficult condition and let it pass or do something to manage it. And uh, as regards more specifically, posit specifically positive empowerment, these are the strengths and component that we want to pursue with different uh, metaphorical activities. Uh, as regards the concept, as I said, we chose a metaphor. Metaphors has, have, have traditionally in adolescent literature have a, a, a very powerful effect on the subconscious, we can say, and on the imagination. And we know that with young people, we must talk to imag imagination more than to co the cognitive. We know that the frontal co cortex is not fully developed. So it's useless to give theoretical concepts. We must talk through images, symbols, stories. And uh, as far as we know, there's no app existing today that is based on a, on a, on a storytelling. Uh, this is just one example of the architecture. So, the, so there was a, a huge work of architecture in organizing all the activities and the tasks. And as regards the design and functionalities, I have always presented in the beginning uh, the main uh, uh, effort that we made for the design and finally the testing. Um, as one example of the human-centered design, I was 
making before, uh, I was talking about before, one example of this iterative, iterative and participatory design with the youth themselves. Um, this is one, some three examples of criticism that we received in the second focus group when we showed the prototype. And someone says, someone said, I think that in some parts could be overwhelming. For example, the exercise on courage should be more simple because it's too complex. So what we did, we took this criticism into consideration and we simplified the activity. And, and this took place for all the criticism that we received, which are very important for us. And so this is one example of how this human-centered design has become very participatory. And finally, uh, as regard the usability testing we'll be doing next week. So we're going to uh, assess how this, the key features will be used by the young people. It will be, there will be individual usability testing. There will be video recording and we will assess um, their um, behaviors in using the, the apps through the uh, system usability scale. So validated tools, the mobile application rating scale and the open question, uh, open comment question with a think aloud method, which will be transcribed and analyzed. So it will be mixed method quantitative and qualitative uh, uh, with usability metrics. This is always in the effort to give uh, evidence-based and scientific uh, um, method-based uh, uh, um, results for our research and study of the app. So thank you for listening and uh, I'm open to questions. Um, they're very welcome. I hope I was able to give you uh, an overview of, uh, of our app. As you can see, there's, there was a lot, lots of work, lots of passion. We all are very much motivated to try to give some help to young people for different personal professional reasons. We are very much, um, we uh, very much believe that young people need the help and so uh, this is how we uh, try, are trying to help them through positive technologies. So I'm passing the word to Professor Gajoli. Thank you for so the much. Flavia, thank you. thank you so much uh, so for, for the very uh, clear and detailed presentation. Uh, just wanted to add that uh, uh, on top of the usability testing, uh, we will perform uh, um, an effectiveness trial. So we are planning uh, a randomized, fully randomized uh, controlled trial uh, with our target user population uh, after the usability trial. Uh, this distinction uh, is very important because if you don't run usability and user experience evaluation, what in technical terms, uh, it is called uh, a formative evaluation of the application. If you go straight to the evaluation phase uh, in terms of effectiveness uh, and the application fails to deliver a significant uh, improvement, uh, then uh, you don't know whether uh, the absence of improvement uh, is due to the uh, design principle, so to the content of the application, which is wrong, or to poor usability. So this is why um, it is very important uh, to uh, discriminate these two phases and run a full scale usability evaluation before testing uh, the actual uh, 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 psychological effectiveness of the application. So after the usability testing, uh, we will go through um, a, a, a randomized control trial, uh, which will take place uh, in the new year. I know that it's a very, um, you know, uh, stressful <laughs> uh, process uh, to, uh, to design, develop and test uh, an application. But of course, we have to keep in mind that uh, um, our target population is very uh, sensitive population. Uh, they are uh, especially uh, fragile. Uh, you know, uh, youth and adolescents. Uh, so we must make sure that what we do is top quality. Thank you very much.